hey guys welcome if you are watching this you have some interest in regeneration so I hope this will be beneficial and let you know what some next steps are let me introduce myself my name is Todd I have a new life in Christ and I'm recovering from an orphan spirit fear and pride uh, I am also the pastor here at Hope that leads our regeneration ministry and we're doing this a little differently right now because of the recent uh, pandemic that we are in uh, but we certainly want to continue to give people an opportunity to participate and be involved in regeneration so let me tell you a little bit about what regeneration is uh, so it is a biblically based christ-centered recovery program that uses God's Word and the 12 steps to help lead people through this process. It is teaching each of us a daily walk with God uh, using small groups, other men and women, and uh, going through a process together. And no matter where you are at personally in your own spiritual journey, Regeneration is literally for everyone at any point in that journey. You do not have to be a Christian or a member of a church to participate in regeneration. Uh, you just have to be willing. And it certainly is helpful to be open to what God might be doing in your life. And we're going to talk about God. We're going to talk about recovery being in Christ. And we're also going to always give you space to process that, to search, to look, to ask questions. Uh, it really is a no judgment zone. So congratulations for just being here to check it out. It really is a big step. I remember back in the mid 90s when I started doing some work like this, really struggling with some anger in my life and going into a process with other people in a group setting was very intimidating for me. It was really scary. And, and we know that just showing up and considering this really does take some courage. I want to show you a video that we use in this uh, uh, newcomers class, uh, this introduction section, to maybe help you get a better understanding, but also to hear from some other people who have been through this regeneration process. So I'll let you watch this video, and then I'll be back to finish up the rest of this. I'm Brandy. Hi, my name is Andrew. My name is Lindsay. Hi, I'm Rob. I have a new life in Christ. I have a new life in Christ. And I'm recovering from alcoholism. My own marital infidelity. Anxiety. Anger. Overspending. Shame from my divorce. Addiction to pornography. Codependency. And I'm recovering from homosexuality. Past sexual abuse. And fear of abandonment. Hi, my name is Scott. And my name is Teresa. I have a new life in Christ and I'm recovering from depression. Bitterness from unforgiveness. Guilt and shame from past abortion. Disordered eating. Drug addiction. Lust. Pride. Finding my significance and what I think people think of me. Overeating. Insecurity. Selfishness. Not trusting God. And shame. Before I came to recovery, my life was hopeless. Full of secrets. Controlled by bitterness and anger. It was a lie. My life was defined by my sin. My marriage was falling apart. I was tired, exhausted from losing the battle against my struggle with sin. My life was a disaster. Unmanageable. Full of chaos. Isolated. Self-centered. And had lost my way. I just didn't like the way that God had made me. Really just struggled with what people thought about me. My life is all about controlling others so that I couldn't be rejected. I sought pleasure in all the things that the world had to offer, uh, and uh, all those things left me empty. Before I came to recovery, my life was unmanageable and out of control. It was a bottle of insecurity. Filled with frustration, anger, and bitterness towards my husband. Way too focused on me, 
what I want and what I think. I wasn't ready to give up and surrender what I'd worked so hard to control. And I couldn't figure out why I wasn't finding any healing. My first night at recovery, I felt like I was unredeemable. I thought, how is this going to help me? No one could really understand how I felt. I'm terrified that I'd have to figure out how to live life sober. Completely defeated. I didn't want to see anybody, talk to anybody, have anybody acknowledge I was here. I wanted it to end really quickly. I felt weak, numb, dirty, like I had a spotlight on me. But I was amazed by everyone's courage. I felt a glimmer of hope because I knew I was among some other broken people. And I didn't have to hide my junk any longer. I was desperate for help. I didn't care what people thought anymore. I just wanted to be well. I shared things that I thought I would never tell anybody. I felt encouragement like there was hope. Relieved. I started to believe. I started to believe a new life was possible. When I heard story after story after story of how Christ showed up and changed everything. When I actually was able to forgive my husband. When I realized I was not alone in my struggles. But when I could see that my sin could be forgiven. Well, when I heard about God's grace. I started to believe that a new life was possible. When I acted in obedience to Christ and shared what had been done to me. When I saw God changing the lives of the other women in the group. When I realized how much I'd allowed my sin to define every single decision and behavior in my life. When I realized that God loved me no matter what I had done. People didn't run screaming from the room. They put their arm around me and they walked with me through that part of the journey. When I heard that it wasn't about what I had done but what Christ had done for me. When I realized that I didn't have to gain the approval of anyone. That God had already chosen me and he wasn't unaware of my struggles or my past. Because of Christ. Because of Christ. I now have joy. My life is now free from self-harm. Peaceful. Filled with hope. And meaningful. And I'm able to share that with people. Because of Christ, my life is now completely changed. Just because I know that God loves me regardless of what I do. My marriage is thriving. My life is no longer determined by circumstances. I'm free from the pain of the past. Free of the bondage of my addiction. I find my joy and my worth in Jesus Christ. There are times when I still struggle, but I have a group of men behind me that spur me on and encourage me. If I could tell you one thing. One thing. One thing. If I could tell you one thing tonight. It would be this. You are not alone. God loves you and he has plans for you. You haven't done anything that God cannot forgive. And that if he could save a wretch like me, he can save you too. Don't let fear hold you back from experiencing the freedom that Christ has for you. This is a safe place to work through the pain of your past. You're in the right place. And I'm so excited for you. Don't give up. Be here every time you can. It is worth your time. And be fully committed. His grace is sufficient. So bring him all of your struggles. There's recovery in Christ when life is broken because you matter to God. God loves you. Well, I hope that video was helpful. And I want to, I want to remind you, the people that you just saw, those were men and women just like you and just like you, they showed up and sat through a newcomer's class. Uh, they were once first-time guests. And in just one short year, God did an incredible work in their lives. For a year, they chose to show up and to participate in the regeneration process. And they've experienced healing, and they've experienced hope, and they've experienced life change. And one of the blessings of regeneration is you will continue to hear stories uh, from our leaders who have been through this process. You will hear stories in your group as people are continuing uh, to walk through this and uh, find hope and peace and comfort and healing. So I want to remind you that these are really two important facts. There really is hope with God. There's hope that change is possible, uh, but also I want to remind you it doesn't happen overnight. None of us got where we are at overnight, and the, the, the healing process, this recovery process that we begin in regeneration, it takes time. It's not fast. We are often encouraging people and say, just keep showing up. And if you do that, if you show up, if you participate, if you do the work, uh, we have seen and know that God can and will do an incredible work in your life. So if this were a uh, first time, a newcomer's group in real time, live, 
it's at this point we would transition to our small group time. And small groups are such an important part of what we do in regeneration. And I'll remind or tell you a couple of things about those small groups. Uh, they, they are always uh, gender, the groups are all by gender. So women, females are always going to participate in groups of women. Men will always participate in groups of men. And we, that doesn't get mixed in this regeneration process. There are many reasons for that. Uh, but we have found that that really works well. Part of uh, what's so important is to create a really safe environment where people are safe to share what they need to share, where they are safe to begin to process uh, this, some of the material that they're working through and begin to share their story. So sometimes starting in a group can feel a little awkward it's different for many of us to sit and, and begin to unpack and share some of our story. Uh, but I think most people would acknowledge it gets more comfortable as you do that. And we, we have guidelines for our groups that we uh, will remind you of often and uh, that we really encourage people to follow because it matters. And so let, let me tell you what a few of those are. In our group time, we're always going to ask you to keep it about self. And so we're talking about our stuff. We're not talking about other people and, and uh, what they need to do. Uh, but we are really beginning to focus on ourselves and talk about ourselves. Uh, we're going to ask people to keep it brief. There are two things happening in groups. One, for many of us, it's the first time we are beginning to share our stories. And we're also learning how and practicing listening to other people's stories. Now, most of our groups are 15 to 18, 15 to 20 people. So we only have so much time. So it really is important that we keep our sharing in those settings brief. So usually you'll have two to three minutes to share some of what you need to share. And it's important that we uh, stick to that. And we're going to help you. The leaders are going to help facilitate that process. And they're going to kind of remind you when time's up and, and, and maybe ask you to wrap up. Uh, but, and they're not being rude. They're not being inconsiderate. It just is important that we let everyone share and that we don't allow certain individuals to dominate the entire uh, sharing process. Uh, we're also going to ask you to keep it clean. Uh, for many of us, as we share our stories, there are some unpleasant, um, you know, just some, some things that we need you to be honest, but we don't always need all the graphic, gory details. And we want to be mindful of our language and, and that it be respectful of other people. And we're also going to, this is, this is so important, we're going to ask you to guard against gossip. Um, and this is so important for a, for a group to be safe, for us to create a dynamic where uh, there's trust. What's shared in the group needs to stay in the group. One of the most destructive things we can do is to leave a group and go tell other people, go talk about things that were shared in the group. That's gossip, it's wrong, it's hurtful, and it destroys trust. So we're going to ask you to, to protect that. Uh, the sharing time, especially in the beginning, you're going to have a leader that's going to model that process. All of our leaders are participants as well. All of us are continuing to work on our own recoveries. And so you're going to get to see how that sharing, what that looks like. And we're going to give you grace as you start to figure that out. Uh, and so this group time becomes a really important dynamic. It's one of the most important things. In our, in our groups, we begin to realize we're not alone. 
our stories are unique, but our pain and our struggles really are not as unique as we think they are. And it's encouraging to hear other people and realize, okay, they get it. I get it. And, and, and we, we feel like we're not doing this alone. So groups are, are such an important part of the process. So this is a little different right now, but we are continuing to have online groups. And so let me give you a few next steps. If you are listening to this and you're like, yes, I want to start this process. Here would be the next steps. We have a form that you can fill out online. It's going to give us some basic information. Uh, and I'm going to ask you to fill that out and get that submitted. Uh, that will then give us information that we can contact you, get you set up for our groundwork group. That would be the next step to get into a groundwork group. Uh, there's also a process uh, we can get you a groundwork workbook, which will be in a PDF form. Those are five dollars, and um, we're figuring out how to make payment for that. But we will we will have that and let you know. Uh, but once we get that information, you will get an invitation to a Zoom group that happens on Monday nights at 7 p.m. Uh, again, there's a, a groundwork group for men, a groundwork group for women, and you will get a link for that groundwork group. You just click on that link and you will, uh, you know, at seven o'clock, that group will start and you will be a part of that group and be able to participate. Um, so, and we're excited that you are considering this. I want to encourage you right now would be a great time to start some recovery work. And uh, there's never a better time than today. So uh, I hope to get to see you and meet you online. And eventually we're gonna get through this and I look forward to the day that we can visit and do this face to face. But uh, until then, uh, let me pray for us and we'll wrap this up. Uh, man, Father, we acknowledge you in this place. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for the person that showed up and is checking out this ministry. So maybe in this moment, God, you could just remind us of the truth that your grace is sufficient and that your uh, strength really is made perfect in weakness. So thank you. Uh, for Jesus, thank you for the recovery that is found in him. And I pray all of this in his name. Amen. All right. Well, I look forward to meeting you and uh, hope to see you soon in a uh, groundwork group online. Take care.